Well, hello, my name is Nancy Bennett, and I have been prompted by God, I suppose, to talk to you about a couple of words that have been repeatedly reoccurring to me over the last couple of weeks. So, Emma Snyder, I am taking you uh, for what you have talked about in your devotion a few weeks ago. I am jumping out of the boat and doing something that I am completely uncomfortable doing. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for giving us another day that we might serve you in a way that honors you. I pray that you give me the words, your words, that I might share them to others that will be uplifting and to give them something to think about. I pray you will watch over the community and our leaders every day, but particularly as we wade through these difficult times. Amen. So I have a confession. I'm a bit slow sometimes when there is something God wants me to do. Uh, when Pastor Mike started uh, doing these devotions, I had this nagging feeling um, I was supposed to do one. But then I thought, that's for someone else to do, someone who is more capable of speaking, more practiced in it. Um, fact is, I didn't even have a topic, so I'm like, what am I going to think about? What am I going to do, even if I was to speak? What makes me think that I could do this, or even should do it? I doubted myself, and I thought I may have some, you know, what made me think I would have something worthwhile to even share with anybody? But this isn't the first time God has had to sort of thump me on the head um, and get me prompted to do something. A few years back, I, uh, I needed to write some articles for here at the church, and I've never been a writer. Uh, I didn't even think I could write, but God would send me ideas. He would send me the words over and over again, month after month. It was truly a lesson in trusting Him. So over the last couple of weeks, uh, from the time I had this original thought, these two words just keep coming up to me over and over again. They come up in other devotions, other messages, other conversations I've been having. And I've learned that when this happens, it means I'm supposed to pay attention and apply it to myself or do something about it. So here we go. I'm going to do something about it. So the words are focus and purpose. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I noticed a bird was building a nest back behind our house. I can see it from my couch. I look out the window, the bush is right there. And this bird was so focused on completing this nest. It didn't matter what else was going on. She knew she had to do and complete this. It was her purpose. The conditions weren't very good. I wouldn't have even blamed her if she said, I think I'll just wait until it looks better outside. It was one of those really windy days that we had a few weeks ago. Things were blowing across the yard. It was starting to get dark. But there she was, back and forth, back and forth, building this nest. She kept on working. And then I wondered, does she have a time limit? And what is that time limit? So I did a little research, and here's a little trivia for you. Most birds don't build a nest until after they mate. And they lay their eggs a couple of days after they mate. So basically, she's got two days, find a location for her nest, and build it. So she has to stay focused no matter what's going on. She has to complete what her purpose is because time can run out. The eggs are going to come whether she's ready or not. So how similar is this for us that we have a limited time here on earth to do what God has purposed for us to do? God created us for a purpose. In Ephesians 2.10, the Apostle Paul says, We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And in Matthew 6.24, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. We're not to divide our time, our focus, on things that are not of God. He created us to love Him, to serve Him, 
It's a purpose that doesn't change. But we, I, can get sidetracked. Unexpected things happen. Our focus and our purpose can start to shift to whatever the day may bring. Our routine may suddenly change, which has happened tremendously for everybody right now. And if you're like me, if my routine gets out of whack, like I don't get my morning coffee, well then just things don't go right for the rest of the day, it seems like. My mind becomes focused on what threw me off. I become short with others because I'm not having the day I expected to have. Or too often, we confuse our purpose with our careers, getting ahead in this world, climb the corporate ladder, have a bigger house, fancier car, more of this, more of that. And if or when those things are gone or in jeopardy, we might feel confused about who we are. We might feel our purpose has been removed. Why get out of bed if I don't have a job to go to? Gaining all these material things or career moves are not wrong in themselves, but it's the attitude or our focus while achieving those things and what we do when you have them that becomes the issue. The truth is, no matter what is going on, the purpose stays the same. We are to honor and serve God at home, at work, Unemployed, employed, it doesn't matter. Each day our task may be different. Our gifts from God may be different from each other, but our purpose as Christians never changes. In everything we do, no matter what it is, what's going on, we are to honor God. Many people think I can go to church on Sunday and say a thank you God, sing a little praise music, and feel that's about all the love I can work in this week. I can check it off my to-do list because I've got a lot of other things to get done this week. Matthew 25, 34 through 40 says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger, and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? And the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So like the bird with a limited amount of time, we should be focusing on how we approach each day and our limited amount of time and how we use each opportunity to complete the purpose God has given us. Well, thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day.